It's not according to God. Whatever that is not good that is happening to you is not the will of God. Mm. Sicknesses are not the will of God. God in his fullness. When God in his fullness entered a human body, that is when he became the son of God. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm Hallelujah. excited to have you tuned in. Welcome to our lovely show, The Marvelous Believers Show. This is where we declare who we are in Christ. This is where we declare that we are marvelous. We have been made marvelous and that cannot change. You are marvelous because Christ has washed you and made you so. I am your host, Pastor Lucy Lepore, but tonight I am accompanied by a wonderful minister to the studio here with me. And uh, it's exciting me because he is a youth. And this, this is nice for me to see that there is a generation right behind us that is carrying the mantle and preaching the good news. So we are so glad that you're here with us. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, God has brought you so that you can minister to us. Let me promise you it can never be the same. Every time that we meet in this show and we hear the word of God and we declare who we are in Christ, mm -hmm. our lives change. Our lives cannot remain the same. Yeah. So I want us to remain... Um, to keep focused and let's open our mind. Let's allow God to speak to us. Allow God to speak to you. Allow God to love you. Allow God to assure you. Allow God to transform your mind even as we listen to the word tonight. I would want now to take this opportunity once again to thank our guest for coming. Thank you. And uh, he has a beautiful name, <laughs> Glorious. <laughs> I want to yeah. allow him to introduce himself and oh. then he can minister to us. Awesome. Welcome. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Body Glorious is my name. And I'm so happy to be here. A minister of the gospel. A blessing. I've been blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so humbled to be here with you for the Marvelous Believer Show. And it's a pleasure, Pastor Lucy. You are a blessing. We thank God for such a gift. Yeah, the scriptures are clear that. It is God who gave these gifts to men for the perfecting of the body. And I know today you will be perfected in Jesus' name. Yeah, so allow me to speak a word of prayer in Jesus' name. Dear Lord, we are so delighted. We are so grateful. We are happy to be here. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace, which is being poured out in our time. Thank you, Father, because your word is being, the, the word that have been spoken by the prophets and has been confirmed by our Lord Jesus Christ, being witnessed by those that saw him, it is now reaching out to our generation today. And it's being witnessed again by them that are hearing to many others, Father. Thank you because of your glory. Thank you because of the manifestation of your word. Thank you because your sons shall be blessed today. We bless your name and we honor you, our Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give thanks in prayer. Amen, 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 amen. So again, Bonnie Glorious is my name. And let's go through the, the wonderful journey in the gospel. Hallelujah. Yes, and so uh, in ministering the word of God and in the place where the world is today, I felt that the Lord was impressing in my heart to speak to us of how, how did it come? How, how has been the plan of God from the beginning? How has he been planning? How has he been looking at us? And what was in his mind when he was creating the world? And after the fall, again, what has happened after Jesus has landed to this place? And what really has he accomplished? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, and so uh, lately, we've heard of many theories of how the world came up to be. And one of them, they say that there are some forces that happened and then they brought forth the world and it was, <laughs> it was created. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, and to some extent, yes, it can be true and very true. Maybe science, science came to the place where God was creating the world and then they, <laughs> they understood it from that part of God himself who was creating the world. God is a spirit who was creating the physical world. And for the world to be manifested, maybe the study came to that place. The wisdom that they had came to the place of where now the force of God was bringing these things forth. <laughs> and now, because they did not have the wisdom of God, the way they defined 
what God did or the creation of the world, they defined it by human words and human terms. But in real sense, what happens, science and all these things that are seen today, they will all come to a point of agreeing with the word of God. They will all come with a, to a point of agreeing with what the Lord has done. Like now, for instance, when God is promising to give us Jesus Christ the Messiah, when he's promising of him in the book of Isaiah, God says that I will send to you a sign and a virgin shall conceive a child. Praise the Lord. That was somehow, it, it, it has not been recorded in history. According to science, that is not possible. Praise the Lord. But according to God, there is nothing that is not really possible. With God, all things are very possible. Praise the Lord. And so, that is just one of the promises. And the word of God is full of promises in the Old Testament from the book of Genesis, coming to the book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and all those promises to the book of Malachi until now the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And so, when Jesus arrives at the scene, he tends to bring us to a wonderful, he brings to, to us a wonderful experience which was in the mind of God from the beginning. Hallelujah. Like for instance, today, when, when you walk to a burial, you can see the grief in the hearts of men. You can see the grief in the faces of people. And all those griefs, they try to tell us that something is happening which is not correct. There is something that is not according to God that is happening. Even our hearts can agree that whatever is happening here, it's not according to God. It has not been like that from the beginning. And so there are many griefs that are happening in the human spirit, in the human life. And we can say that some of them are out of the human control. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Some of them cannot be controlled from the human perspective. But because man is a superior being, and when God was creating man, God, man is the only creation that God created in his own image and in his own likeness. Praise the Lord. Man is the only, is the only creation that we see God himself. When God was creating the fishes of the sea, he said, let the waters bring forth some animals, and it brought forth fishes. Hallelujah. When God was creating animals, he spoke to the ground, and the ground brought forth those animals. But when he was creating man, we can see something that is deep. When God is creating man, he says, let us make man in our image after our own likeness. Praise the Lord. So God created man in his own image and in his own likeness. And God tells man, let them have dominion. God gives man dominion. He blesses man. He tells them to replenish the earth. He tells them to fill the earth. And he tells man to always offer the solutions for the world. Praise the Lord. Wow. So man has always had that thing. Man in his, in his fallen nature, uh, sorry, when God did that to man, and then when we come to Genesis chapter 2, we see now God forming a house where this man will live here on the earth. Because in Genesis 1, he was in the image and the very likeness of God. But when you come to Genesis chapter 2, God is saying, uh, God is forming something from the mud, and then he breathes into man. And then when God breathed into this man, that is when he became a living thing. He became a living man. Praise the Lord. And so that means there, there is something that is inside of a man that is from God. And now to some extent, God, God tells man there are some trees here in the garden and in the middle of the garden. By the will of God and by the grace of God, we will, we will dig deeper some other days concerning the tree, the trees that were in the middle of the garden. Because we see in the book of Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, verse number 15. He's saying, uh, sorry, not 15, but verse number 7, where we see that story. Yeah, and it says, And the Lord God formed man, of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils and the, the breath of life. So God breathed into man a breath which is of life. Now the life that was in God is now pumped into man. And when God pumps his life inside of this man, man becomes a living soul. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And then he says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward of Eden, and there he put man whom he had formed. And then he says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree, 
that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the middle of the garden. In most cases, we don't see this place. We tend to think that it was only one tree that is in the middle of the garden of Eden. But there were two trees in the middle of the garden. He says there was the tree, uh, the tree of life also in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Praise the Lord. So there are two trees. And God tells man, you can feed from all the trees. Even the tree that is in the middle of the garden, they are two. There is the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God says, you can eat all trees, including the tree of life. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that one you shall not, you shall not eat from it. Praise the Lord. And it has got a significance in our living today. Praise the Lord. Because now, uh, when man ate of that tree, okay, or rather, let me say, before man ate that tree, in the same, same book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 25, the Bible says that, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Praise the Lord. As long as they ate from all the trees, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Bible says that, yes, they had some outward weaknesses according to our eyes, but they were not ashamed because they were not awakened to that life of the flesh. They were not awakened to the life that is from the outside. That is the outside life, the, the body now which they were given, which was formed. But there was that life that was inside of them, the tree of life. The tree of life also has got a meaning. And when Jesus comes, the Bible calls him the man who came to give us life. <laughs> he is the giver of life. Praise the Lord. Amen. He came and he gave us life. But now, uh, maybe not sticking there for long, he, when, when man and woman eats from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, their eyes are opened. There are certain eyes. There is a certain sight that is opened. Praise the Lord. The sight for, of the, the bodily sight. Or rather, they fall from the life of God. Because... They used to fellowship with God. And there is a certain life that can on there is a certain life that allows us to fellowship with God. Praise the Lord. And that life is the tree. When they ate from the tree of life, it allowed them to have fellowship with the Father. Praise the Lord. And when God used to come to them, they would fellowship with God. And God, they used to walk in the dominion which God has, had given them. But when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they fell from the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Through one man's sin, mm. that sin was eating from another tree, which was not according to truth. <laughs> because <laughs> the thing that made them to eat from that tree, it was what the devil had eluded on their own sight. Mm. He told them, when you will eat of the other tree that God told you you should not eat from, you will, you will be like God knowing good and evil. But we see in the book of Genesis, God already had created them in his own image and in his own likeness. Sure. It was already in, the, in them. They were already in the image and the likeness of God. But now when the devil comes, he's called the deceiver yes. because there is no truth in him. Even today, he will come showing you what you don't have, yet God has availed it for you. He will come to the believer and tell the marvelous believer. <laughs> he will come and offer a sickness to the marvelous believer and then tell him, no, you are not healed. Yet the scriptures are clear. He says that when we believed in Jesus and when we believed in his death, his burial and his resurrection, we received a certain life. And that life is the life as it is in God. Praise the Lord. And that life cannot be sick. Hallelujah. When we come to the book of Peter, second. Second, first Peter chapter 2. Allow me to rush there, speaking about sicknesses. <laughs> it's a major challenge even to the believer. And yet God calls you marvelous. <laughs> wow. We here, we call you marvelous. But then there are some weaknesses that will be pumped to you. And then he will open you to what you don't have according to the eyes of the flesh. But in real sense, God has placed it inside of you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The Bible is clear. In the book of Genesis, uh, sorry, 1 Peter chapter 2, from verse 22, he's speaking about Jesus and the way he came and how he took our life, how he took sin, praise the Lord. Mm. Jesus came, God himself, he, 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 he pressed himself or he, he narrowed down to the human life. He was humble enough. Praise the Lord. God was humble enough to enter a human body and then 
enter a, a womb of a woman and then come to the world only to save the, the world. Wow. It is only God Almighty, the supreme I am, who came inside a human body so that he may save man mm -hmm. from the sin that he had entered into. Praise the Lord. And so he says, when he came, he says, verse 22, who did no, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Praise the Lord. Jesus ne never did any sin. Who, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not back, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. And then he continues, verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Praise the Lord. Today, it will be poured on you how sinful you are. But then, the defense, your defense, one of the weapons that you use for your defense is this knowledge here. He says that Jesus bore your sins. Praise the Lord. He took your sins on his own body and then he went on a tree because of you. Praise the Lord. Because the wages of sin is dead. Hallelujah. The wages of sin is death. But now, he himself, God who entered the human body, he comes and he takes our, our sins. Hallelujah. Wow. He takes the sins of man. He bears our sins. And then he's, he stands on a tree. And he takes the whole judgment for mankind. Wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then he continues to say, he says, that we've been dead to sin. So it was for our necessity. He's taking our sins was not for us to remain sinners. He mm. took our sins. Mm. Then he says that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Praise the Lord. Mm. He doesn't say that who, after taking his own sin, that we can. Or of necessity, we can. We can, we can live unto righteousness. Ama, we can live unto righteousness. And then at some point... We live outside of righteousness. No, he says, who on his own body took our sins and he took being dead to sins. That we being dead to sins, should. Should is a strong word in grammar. Should means that by all necessary things that we can imagine, that must happen. And it really happened because when he took our sins, we died to sin and then we are living unto righteousness. And then he says, by whose stripes you were healed. Praise the Lord. By whose stripes you were healed. You were healed by his stripes. According to the death of Jesus. Because sin again, when we trace back to the history of mankind, God did not create sicknesses. <laughs> they were never from God. He says that after creating the world, the Bible is clear that God, God looked back at what he had created, including you. And then God said, behold, all things were good. <laughs> and you are good. Praise the Lord. Your health is good. So God never created sicknesses. It's not according to God. Whatever that is not good that is happening to you is not the will of God. Mm. Sicknesses are not the will of God. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> sometimes we tend to, to think that God is that character who can take something bad and then teach you a lesson. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh, no, not really. God, God, God is not a man. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. God is not a man that he should lie. God does not use evil things to teach evil people, uh, to teach good people. <laughs> God cannot take an evil thing, then lay it on you, or take a sickness, lay it on you so that you may learn a lesson. That is not Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. Jehovah God, the Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God is not limited to time. Hallelujah. God is not mandated or he is not under our times, our series, and our seasons. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And so, by whose stripes we were healed. So, Jesus, Jesus Christ on that place of the cross, when he hung on that cross, God himself in a human body. And then, for the first time in history, when the Son of God, who is God, who entered a human body. The reason why Jesus Christ is called the Son of God is because God, in his totality, when he was in eternity, 
he planned how he will save mankind. Mm -hmm. Because God in his fullness as God cannot come in the physical realm because in Genesis, God limited himself. He told man, you, you will have dominion over everything that I have placed on the earth. Mm -hmm. So when God, if God can come as God in his fullness as God or in his totality as God, that can make him a liar. Because God cannot be a liar. Mm -hmm. So now God had to look for a human body that he may enter a human body. God in his fullness. When God in his fullness entered a human body, that is when he became the son of God. He is called the son of God, not because he is junior God or because he is inferior to God. Mm -hmm. But he became a son of God when de deity himself compressed himself inside a body and mm -hmm. entered a human. And then he is born. That is what makes us call him the son of God. Mm -hmm. And he's called for the first time in history the son of God when he comes in the book of, in the, in the, in the gospels, what we call the gospels, mm -hmm. the, the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That is when we see the word son for the first time. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so the marvelous believer, the, the journey to bring us to that place of believing in him, begins in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then from that point, from that place, he now starts the journey of bringing us back to himself. God begins to bring us back to himself. He comes to the point of now causing us and bringing us back to the place of glory. And what was lost in the Garden of Eden, he brings, he starts the journey of bringing it back and now in a higher way in a much marvelous way, in a deeper way. Mm. Because from that point, it's now when man is saved. Mm. The salvation of mankind happens. And then the Bible says that the firstborn of all the brethren, that is the son of God, who was the only begotten son of God before his death, burial, and resurrection. But now, after the death of Jesus, after the burial of Jesus, after the resurrection of Jesus. The Bible in the book of Ephesians says that when he was raised, we were raised together with him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And now we have been made the sons of God. Hallelujah. And now the believer is not just a mere human being. That's why sometimes we feel bad when we enter funerals. When we go for a funeral, we feel bad. And sometimes we are tempted. <laughs> Tempted to do what? To do what sons do. Mm. <laughs> when Jesus met people going to a funeral, he was tempted and he called that guy. He said, no, this guy is sleeping. And then he told them, you guy, get up. Mm. <laughs> and that is the position of a believer. That is where God has mm. brought us to. Praise the Lord. Mm. And so it's a blessing. It's wonderful to understand what Christ has done for us. Mm. That is the best thing. When we come to that fullness, of understanding where Christ has brought us, we will live from that place of victory. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are believers, but do we really, do we really manifest mar that marvelous life? Here comes now the place of coming to that perfection. That's why you cannot miss watching this again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, and so in Jesus' name, you guys are blessed. Yeah, wow. it's a blessing. Wow. Yes. Wow, wow. You cannot miss the Marvelous Believers show because this is where we talk about who we have become in Christ. We were raised in Him. Yeah. We were raised inside Him. Yeah. As He rose and sat on the right hand of the Father, you are inside. And that's where you are and that's your position. Mm -hmm. You are not just walking on earth. The Bible says we are in this world, but we are not of the world. Yeah. We are seated in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. That was that was powerful. Thank you so much. That was powerful. Mm -hmm. That was a teaching on its own. Mm -hmm. That God himself, Elohim, compressed himself into a human body. The whole deity compressed himself and entered the womb of a woman. And now he has, I don't know, compressed again into your spirit, yeah. into your heart. Yeah. You become the temple of deity. Yeah. 
you are Godhead yourself walking. Mm. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. We are marvelous. That's what makes us marvelous. That's what makes us extraordinary. Mm. He is the extra in the ordinary. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow, we are so blessed. And um, as we conclude, we just want to ask uh, him to pray for us because he has said, we, when God created you, he said, behold, it was good. Yeah. Everything that God created actually was good. We yeah. know man fell, but Jesus came and returned us, reconciled us to that original plan of God. Mm -hmm. And so even today, mm -hmm. anything that is not good does not, God does not prune. Last week we were talking about uh, the 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 wrong teaching that when things go wrong, it is God teaching us a lesson. It is God pruning us. It is not right. Mm -hmm. God does. God cannot use evil on a marvelous believer. It yeah. is not true. Yeah. Everything that is not right is not from God. It is disorder. It is misplaced. It is an interference. It is a trespasser. And we have the power to command it to stop in your life. Yeah. We have the power to bring ours. We have been brought back, reconciled back to God, yeah. reconciled to the original plan in the Garden of Eden. And so this, uh, as we conclude our show tonight on Today, I want us just to pray that anything that is not good becomes good. Anything that is not in order aligns itself to order in your life, be it your health, be it your relationships, be it your family, even your life, even your spiritual life. There is no reason at all why a marvelous believer should think I am condemned. You are not condemned. You are simply marvelous. I told you for lack of better words, you are just marvelous. And so I'll ask that you just pray with us uh, that you may bless uh, us as we conclude the show and we declare everything must be good. Yeah. That is the plan of God. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you so much. So, marvelous believer, allow me to give thanks in prayer. Dear Lord, we are so grateful. We thank you for all that you have done for us in Christ Jesus. Thank you for everything that you have done for us. The scriptures are clear that who being in the very form of God did not look at these things, but he humbled himself so that he may come and save us and bring us to that place of glory in Jesus' name. And so have you given him a name that is above every name, that at his name every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. Thank you, Jesus, because that same, same glory that was inside of you, the same thing is inside of the believer today. And so anything that is contrary to their life in Jesus' name, I start them up to the glory that is inside of them in Jesus' name. And everything around them will start to, to conform to the reality which is in Christ inside of them in Jesus' name. Anything that is not godly inside your life, you who is listening today in Jesus' name, it starts reconciling. It starts mm. going back to the reality of mm. who it is supposed to be in Jesus' name mm. because of the glory that the Son of God has come and He has done for you in Jesus' name. You are blessed. Everything about you is blessed. Mm. All things concerning you are blessed you are multiplying you are fruitful you are replenishing all things that makes god god have been placed inside of you and so everything is according to god you who thought you were sick right now you have been healed in jesus name you who had any issue of your life anything inside your body that is not according to god today it is implanted, it is removed in Jesus' name. The health of God, the, the eternal God kind of life is manifesting itself through your body mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. You are blessed, you are honored of God. Thank you, Father, for the hearers. Thank you for the understanding of your word. Thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in this knowledge. Even as we go deeper inside of you, Father, it is supplied to all people, not only in this world, but also in the world to come, not only here, not only to those who are listening, but many who will come after in Jesus' name. We love and we bless your name in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Minister Bonnie Glorious, Pleasure. for being with us. Uh -huh. I promise you we need you back. Oh, and we will soon have you. Uh -huh. And thank you for staying with us. Thank you for tuning in once again. And we meet again uh, on Monday at 9.45, our usual time, our usual place, the Marvelous Believer on Wema TV. Mm. Amen.